Yud is good, yo. It's your boy Ty back here with another video. And in this video today, we're going to be creating the best defensive lineup right now that you can make in NBA 2K22, my team. I do want to say, guys, there's a lot of great defenders. If your favorite player is not on this and you think they're, they deserve to be, I'm sorry. But again, there are just so many great defensive players in the game. So we're going to make a lot up here, okay? We're going to make 13 players, obviously 10 starters and then three bench players in case, you know, an injury happened or something like that. Now, before I dive any further into this, if you are new to my channel and have not yet, make sure to smash that subscribe button as we're on the road towards 100,000 subscribers. We're gonna start off at the point guard position and obviously guys, Ben Simmons has to be here. If you go in here at the point guard position and you look by height, there's really not much. Sabonis is not, you know, obviously in this Ben Simmons. Then you got, you know, 6'9", Denny, Magic stuff, guys like that. But by far and away, it's not particularly close. Ben Simmons is the best defensive point guard in the game. Again, it's not close. So if you like defense and you're you know wondering, do I do you run Luca? Do you run MJ? Do you run a guy like Dwayne Wade? Well, again, if you like defense and want the best defensive player, Ben Simmons is exactly that. Next up, guys, the shooting guard position. We've got a lot of great invincible shooting guards in my team. But Kawhi Leonard is the best defensive shooting guard in the game. You want to know why? It's He's only 6'7". But you want to talk about an on-ball defender with his own defensive stance, his own defensive or his own player model, right? Just arms hang down to the ground. We've got to talk about Kawhi Leonard. Defensively, guys, he's got every badge in the game. Even the post badges, you might be like, what? Kawhi has them. He's got them. Tendency-wise, 99's across the board. You might be like, like, wait, Ty, why does he not have 100? 99 is basically the same. And again, I don't know if there's defensive stance, but if there is, Kawhi Leonard has his own. So for me, Kawhi Leonard at that shooting guard position obviously has to be plugged in. And at the small forward position, again, there's only one option here. It is invincible, Giannis. Now, this lineup is going to be expensive. I kind of want you guys to be aware of that and, and, and not, you know, not be confused about it. This lineup is going to be of the best defensive players in the entire game. And so, in my opinion, you got to include Invincible Giannis. Giannis has his player build, 6'11", incredibly long wingspan. He's going to play lanes incredibly well. Again, every defensive badge in the game. And if a guy has every defensive badge in the game, and, and you, you look at the height, wingspan, it's solid. How do you argue against that? And that's my kind of question to you guys. I, I just think it is really hard to argue against a guy like Giannis with his size, with his player build. It's extremely hard to beat what Giannis provides to you guys on the court. Power four position. This is one in the starting lineup. There's one option. Now, my bench unit will talk about the different options. But starting, you have to look at Invincible Kareem. You guys notice the trend of every defensive badge in the game? Well, you look at Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and he's got every defensive badge in the game. And he is 7'2 with a 7'5 wingspan. I'm not just sitting here gassing these Invincible cards. Yes, obviously, to make the lineup so far, you're probably looking at over, you know, 3 million MT, which is just absolutely ridiculous to think about. Maybe not. I don't know how much Giannis really is or Kareem, but you're looking at like probably at least two mil. But these guys have the best player builds. They have every Hall of Fame defensive badge in the game. And can you imagine Kawhi Leonard on ball and you got Ben Simmons, Giannis, and Kareem all just playing lanes? We're not even talking about the center position yet. That is just absolutely ridiculous to think about. Obviously, offensively, you'd have to run your offense through Kawhi Leonard, which I don't know, that could get a little scary. But defensively, man, this type of a lineup is not something you want to ever play against. Now, the center position, we got to talk about Taco Fall. Now, the backup center, we're just going to have, it's just going to be a Giants because you have to have as much height as possible. The reason I like Taco is I feel like he's the most complete center in my team. Now, I know a lot of people love Yao because of his jump shot. A lot of people love the new Manu. I still, to this day, think Taco is the best out of all of them. Now, obviously, Manute's free, and so that's part of it. But if you want the best of the best, you got to have Taco fall in the lineup. Now, obviously, the average height in here is 7 feet or above. You go 6'10", 6'7", 6'11", 
seven to seven six you got a seven foot average at minimum okay and so for me that's the important thing when we talk about the defensive end that you got a lot of height and then Kawhi, Giannis, Kareem, they've got legitimately every defensive badge in the game on Hall of Fame. Now the bench point guard, it was tough for me. It was really tough for me to find a bench point guard that I can plug in as being the second best defensive player. I mean, we got to talk about guys like Penny Hardaway. Got to talk about guys like Luka Doncic because they're going to be invincibles and have most of the badges in the game. But, I mean, there's really not that second point guard that you're like, wow, he definitely is there. I mean, Magic Johnson has some height. Josh Giddey's decent. For me, when I broke it down, the guy I settled on is Invincible Penny Hardaway for being the second best defensive point guard in the game. And you guys might be asking why. Here's the deal. 6'7", that's tall enough, guys. That's tall enough. And you look at his defensive badges. I mean, rim, brick wall on, on gold instead of Hall of Fame. Yes, I wish it were on Hall of Fame, but it doesn't and it doesn't dissuade me for, from Penny Hardaway. I don't run Penny Hardaway, but it's not because of the lack of defense. I don't run Penny Hardaway because of his release. It, it's really that simple. 6'7", 6'10", wingspan. That's personally why I prefer him over Luka Doncic. If you want to argue invincible Luka, I'm okay with that as well. I, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. But I just feel like, I mean, what does Luka do better than Penny? Penny's got more defensive badges. Penny's got a longer wingspan. And so for me, I do, I do definitely think Penny Hardaway deserves his spot in the bench unit. At the backup two, we're going with invincible Scotty Pippen. If you wanted to plug in Tracy McGrady because he's got a longer wingspan, that's fine with me. But I, my whole thing with Scotty Pippen is... He's on the court to defend, and he's got a good player build. He gets as bumpy as anybody else in my team. I love the Galaxy Opus Scotty, and I love the Invincible Scotty. Now, T-Mac, again, just has that little longer wingspan. If you look at their badges, I mean, box is box and rim. I mean, that's really why I'm choosing Scotty over T-Mac, just because of those extra Hall of Famers. As well as guys, he's Scotty Pippen. T-Mac's a better overall card, but if you're just talking about the defensive end of the court, I think Scotty Pippen is that step ahead. Now, the backup small forward wasn't really that tough for me in general. Uh, and it's not Pippen. I don't know why I started typing that. It's Invincible LeBron. Now, you guys never see me talk about Invincible LeBron. And a lot of times you, you, you see me, you know, say that Bobby Jones is better than Invincible LeBron. And I hold true to that. Bobby Jones is better than Invincible LeBron James as an all-around player, but not strictly as a defensive player. LeBron, every defensive badge in the game, stat-wise, a perfect the best on-ball defender in the entire game is LeBron James. It, it, it doesn't get any more simple than that. He is the best on-ball defender in the game, better than Kawhi Leonard even. I mean, I love what LeBron James gets into with his player build, being as tall as he is, decent wingspan. I'm absolutely in love with the card on the defensive end of the court. Now, once he gets better dribble six, maybe a better release, then we'll be talking about LeBron James as an all-around card. But strictly on the defensive end of the court, I'm a big fan of King James. Power forward position, this one might surprise a lot of you guys, Wilt Chamberlain. Now, you guys might be like, Ty, what? Where's Shaq? Ty, what? Where's the inv these invincible cards? My question to you is, what is Shaq doing on the court that Wilt isn't on the defensive end of the court? And you guys are going to say, well, well, Ty, guys. Well, 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 Ty, man, he's got better stats. He he's got better batches. And you guys are right, but Wilt's player model is better than Shaq's. And, and I don't think anybody can question that. Yes, Shaq does have more complete badges. If you want to say Shaq's a better defensive player than Wilt, I am okay with that. I do think Shaq might be the better on-ball defender. But what I've seen from Wilt is he's snag man. He gets incredible rebounds. His wingspan to play lanes is better than Shaq's. And I'm telling you guys, on the defensive end of the court, Wilt is better than Shaquille O'Neal. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say it's by a lot. I'm not going to sit here and say Wilt's that much better of a defender than like a Joel Embiid, Kevin Garnett type of player even. But his wingspan does it for me. And until we get invincible, Wilt with maybe a better release. I, I, it's hard to play him because of his release and his low three ball. But it's not because of Wilt's lack of defense. At the center position, you guys can see right here, we're going to plug in Manute Bull. If you want to argue that Manu Bull is the best defensive center in the game, I am not going to be the one to argue with because I love him, man. He's a rim protector. He can switch out onto guards. I just think Taco is just just has that little bit better defense. It, it's not you know anything bad or you know for Manu. I like Manu in general. I just think Taco does a little bit a little bit more. Manu better. He's a little taller. 
a little longer wingspan, and that definitely does help him out. I do think both Taco and Manu are quite a bit better than Yao on the defensive end of the court. But, I mean, if you don't have those two guys, you have to have Yao Ming. It's that simple, guys. These Giants, you have to have on your squad. You have to have two out of the three. And I'm not saying, like, if you don't have them, like, you're just going to get dog. It, because as long as you got Manu, I mean, you can make things work. Matchup-wise, you can make things work. But, again, I do think Yao is the worst out of those three bigs. We're going to put him in that 13th spot. In the 12th spot, guys, we're going to plug in Shaq. Again, if you do want to run Shaq over Wilt, that is fine with me. I'm just one, right, where I believe that Shaq's player build, his wingspan, is not as good as Wilt's. Now, he's obviously wider. It's going to help him out a little bit. But I'm telling you guys, I do believe Wilt's player build is better. I think Wilt competes better on the defensive end. And that is my personal opinion. Last, but certainly not least... Plugging in Jonathan Isaac. If you want to, if you if you want to have Scotty on ball, I'm plugging in Jonathan Isaac over LeBron James because he is going to play lanes even better than King James. Has every defensive badge he needs. Defensive stats are nearly perfect for the card with tendencies upper 90s across the board. I'm not gonna slander you if you like uh, Jonathan Isaac in here over LeBron. Same thing with Shaq over Will. I'll slander you if you like Yao defensively over Taco or uh, you know or Manu. Now another guy I want to give an honorable mention to is Luka Doncic, just because the point guard position right now, defensively speaking, is not great. Now once we get a point guard Giannis, once we get a point guard LeBron, this is going to take a turn. Or even like a point guard Scotty, maybe eventually, which I doubt happens. But, you know, those type of out of position cards, maybe a point guard, uh, you know, Jonathan Isaac, maybe a point guard KD, maybe a point guard Don Maker. This might change around, but I do have to talk about Luka Doncic and add him in there uh, to just to talk about. But here's the thing, guys. If the 250K tournament was today and I only had to play defense and I didn't have to play any offense, this is the squad that I would go out there with. Hopefully this answers a lot of your questions on who's a better defensive player in my team to maybe help your, your, your kind of thought process out. You're trying to decide between Wilt and Shaq. You know, if you're trying to decide between, you know, Kawhi and a guy like Scotty, maybe this can help you guys out. Drop a like on the video, guys. Let's get to wrap it up. Subscribe if you are new. As always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.